trying to connect ourselves to the truth always and uh, finding ourselves lost and confused and uh, it's kind of crazy how can it be if I'm trying to connect myself to the truth if I'm trying to do the right thing so why this path can also lead me to the wrong way to a place of sadness of bitterness so Rabbi Nachman is talking about that and he's saying that the main reason that the person is falling to black bitterness to Marash Chora is because that he's got too much truth what does it mean too much truth? that he's looking at himself really deep and he sees that he is not praying like he should and that he's not learning like he should and that he is not guarding his thoughts and that he is confused and that he is not holy and that he is not generous enough and that he is surrounded with fears and, and it's all true <laughs> but it's too much <laughs> it's too much the verse is saying there is a certain kind of truth that you need to throw down to the ground the attribute of truth said to the Creator before of the creation the Creator is humble he is always asking everyone what you suggest what you think we should do what do you offer and that's, that's his way so when he asked the attribute of truth what you suggest what you think about the creation so Midat Ahmed said don't create people human beings they're all liars so Hashem took the truth, the attribute of truth, and threw it down to the ground. And it's hard, it's impossible to, to understand. How can it be? The Creator, that He Himself, His name is Emet, Hashem Elokechem, Emet, one of His names is Emet, that He's always saying the truth, that His seal is the seal of truth, that without truth you cannot stand in front of him a person that is lying cannot talk to Hashem so how can it be that Hashem when he hears the answer, the real answer of the truth is throwing it down to the ground because there is truth and there is the real truth the truth of the will of the Creator is higher than the truth that we can find and understand with ourselves. That's why I'm succeeding so well in this world. I'll tell you why. Because everyone that are watching my videos are waking up and saying, Wow, you're the first one that is saying those things. I never heard you're the first rabbi that speaks like that. You're the first rabbi that speaks like that. And how can it be? And how come I never heard those words before? And it's only because the people got too much truth and they don't understand the real truth of Hashem, of the Creator. There is no way in the world that Hashem will want you to be said. It's not an option. And you're asking yourself, but Hashem is doing everything and I'm sad, so it means that Hashem Ibarachi made me sad. So I explained that thing once in a class that a father, a parent, he can punish his child. And you cannot say that it was not the parent that punished his child. It was him. But you can also not, you cannot say that he wanted to do that. He did it and he forced himself to do it. Like that Abraham Avinu forced himself and prepared himself to be ready to slaughter Yitzchak. And it's written by et that he forced his hand he sent his hand to grab the knife to he had to force himself to do that he couldn't do it he didn't want to do that but because he realized that he was commanded to so he forced himself to do against his natural will so Hashem Barach, the father of mercy he himself he never ever in the world not exist he never wants you to be upset he never wants you to be sad it's not an option when you cry he cries when you scream he screams when they're in sorrow he's in sorrow with them 
And his sorrow is greater than our sorrow. Like a little child, he doesn't learn. So okay, he doesn't succeed so much in school. But his mother, she is all worried what will be with him. She is suffering much more than him because he, okay, so four hours, five hours a day, he's got some hard time with his teacher, but he distracts his thoughts and he's running with his friends and then everything is great. But also with people that are not married. So okay, I'm not married and he can be even sad and upset, but you know, he's... He's flowing with life. His 60 years old mother sitting in her room and crying and finishing the Tehillim over and over again and again. And why? Because she feels the sorrow in a deeper way. And that's the Creator. Always when I'm comparing the Creator to parents, I'm, I mean like normal parents, not, not like what we can find today. Like parent in, in the real concept of parents, not like what that we have today that we're going through hell with our parents. I'm talking about like the parents should be loving and supporting and caring and, and, and with all of their heart. Today our parents they need someone to take care of them. They need they need they need love, they need compassion. They they themselves are struggling in life and they cannot really give the, the what that we need, what that we're so thirsty to receive from them. So bottom line, Hashem Barach, he is looking at us and he's full with compassion, full with love. But he must force himself to bring us to certain places because he wants to educate us. And Hashem Barach is doing it because there is a truth and that truth must be said. Those are all of the negative things that have been said on us as a nation and all of the judges and judgments and, 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 and criticism that been said on every individual, on every person. If he's doing something wrong, you cannot ignore it. You cannot ignore a sin. A person is not allowed to go into sin and that's it. Hashem won't do anything. So Hashem, he took the truth, he listened to her words, but then he threw it down to the ground. What's the meaning of, of throwing the truth down to the ground? The result of that is that the truth will grow up again from the bottom, from the ground. So actually the truth will see and will understand the real intention, the real meaning of Hashem Barach, of the Creator Himself. That His intention, that His will is even deeper and much more full with kindness and, and love, unconditional love, to heal us. It's true that we're liars, like that Midata Emet said, but I want to teach them how to be honest people that are saying the truth. That's the real truth. That's the truth of Hashem. So it's true that you're far, it's true that you're not praying like you should. It's true that you're not holy. It's true that you're wasting your time. It's all true. But there is a higher truth than that. And it's to guide you and to teach you and to give you a hand and to help you to build yourself. And the beginning is that you're going to give yourself that hand. That you will support yourself. That you will back up yourself. That you will hug yourself. That you will accept yourself. That you will understand that you don't have the ability to be someone else and to change yourself in a second. Without the help of the Creator, you cannot defeat the evil inclination. The Yetzirah are made out of fire, a clear fire that you cannot see. He can attack in every second and you cannot defend yourself. You don't know where is he coming from. It's like all around you. Every situation can bring things to be harder and worse than you are lost. The only thing you can do is to come to Hashem. You're surrounded in 359 degrees all over the place. You're lost and you have only one thing that you can do to go with Hashem. That's the only thing that you can do. And you should count on Hashem that the fact that you were counting on Him, He will f fight with all of your enemies. Because that you counted on Him, Abotech Bashem, now kindness is going to surround you. All of his circle, faith will surround you. 
Faith is your loyalty will surround you and will protect you and will bring you to a safe place. To the place that you yearn to get, to, to, to get, to, be, to come to that place. To the Holy Land, to the Homeland, to the Promised Land, to the place of quiet, to the place of, of happiness, of joy, of complete health, that all of our prayers will be answered. And you know, I, I don't know what to do with you guys, because I have so many students, and no one really feels what that I feel. It's, I, I can scream like a slaughtered duck, and no one is hearing me. The redemption is happening. It's, it's, it's now. It's not in five years, you don't know what we're going to see. We're talking about the present, about now. And listen carefully to what that I'm saying, because you have a chance. I'm saying it every class, and every class you have a chance to get it. The redemption is happening right now. In front of your eyes, and I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about what that you can see in life. In life you can see the redemption of the Creator. And in the moment that you join, in the moment that you bring yourself into it, that you start flowing with that idea of redemption, you will see wonders. You will see wonders. I'll tell you a story. A friend of mine, he bought a car. He lives here in New York. He bought a car. And he wanted to drive his car. But you know, in New York you have rules. And he needed a, 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 the, the, the plate for the car. How do you call that plate? What? License. license plate. He needed a license plate, but he ordered it and he didn't receive it. It was supposed to take a week or so and he didn't know what to do. He stuck with the car without license plate and he didn't know what to do and he stuck. He called a friend to ask him if he can park his car in his garage. So, because he doesn't, he cannot go, he can't do anything and you can't park a car without a license plate in the street, so you need to do something. He called his friend, his friend asked him, what do you need? He said, I need to park my car. He said, why I need to park your car? He said, because I don't have the license plate. His friend told him, which car? He answers to him, he said, you won't believe it. He said, what? What happened? He said, few days ago, I sold the same car. I have the same license plate. The same thing that you need. Same car, same year, I don't know, all the details. I'm, I'm not so into all of those mechanical information, details. All of what that he needed, his friend had. And he didn't know that his friend sold his car. And he didn't call him because that he knew that he had that car. He didn't know. Just Hashem in Barach made everything just like that to be perfect in a way that he could be worried for hours and he could be so terrified and what I'm going to do and I'm stuck with my car and I'm this and I'm that and he doesn't realize that there is a plan and the plan is perfect and he could drive after it with that license plate for a few days until he received his own and the insurance was, well, insurance was uh, uh, value... Um, uh, what? Paid and everything was right. She's helping me. Oh, Hashem. She's uh, Santa's little helper. She's helping me. That's why she came to help me. You don't see what the Hashem sees. And the only way to see it and not to ruin for yourself in the end is to close your eyes and to count on Him. Because there is only one path out of the 360 that are open for you, that is, your, that, that is yours, that is you. In every direction that you're going to look, you have options, 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 options. All of them are not yours. There is only one. How are you going to know? You just need to listen. And Hashem is talking in silence. Because the Mama Daka, very thin and gentle, quiet voice Hashem has got. And that's how He speaks to you, from inside. Always in a positive way, in a way that will cheer you up, in a way that will tell you, don't worry, my child, it's okay. And we're not listening to that voice. We're arguing with this voice. Why? Because we heard that rabbi and he said, a student of mine called me today, I didn't know what to do with him. 
It's Elul. It's the month of Chuba. And he is all chasing himself and hating himself. And I'm not doing enough. And I'm not completing my... What are you doing? You think that's what you need to do in the month of Elul? Month of Tshuva, you need to come back to Hashem. What does it mean to come back to Hashem? Yes, I know. I read also in so many books that they're explaining you what you need to do. And there is no snow to roll in the snow like that they're describing what you need to do. There is no snow. You need to go to, to Sibir to, 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 to roll in the snow in this uh, time of the year. And they're telling you, you need to roll in the snow, and you need to break yourself, and you need to do deep tshuva on all of your sins. And if you're not completing your tshuva, and he's telling me today over the phone, I'm terrified. I feel like I'm in, before of the exams, the final exams of college, and I'm before of the exams of Rosh Hashanah, and what will be with me, and I'm about to be judged. What's going on with you? That's not the right way. It's not Hashem speaking like that. It's not the voice of Hashem. Hashem is with you. Hashem gives you life. Hashem cares about you. Hashem wants you to smile. Relax. Lay back. Breathe. Think with yourself. What can I do? So I gave that friend an example. I told him, listen, dear brother, listen. You have your exams. You're about to become a doctor. You must go through those tests. You must succeed. Great, wonderful. So for those exams, you need to sit every day and to learn 4, 5, 8, 12, 15 hours. Great. But you should also keep on washing your teeth and you should keep on eating and also keep on taking a shower every day and keep on washing your... your... It's also part of your mission to become a doctor, right? Even though that, that is not practically what that you need to bring to the exam, but also you need to bring yourself, you need to be focused, you need to be clear, you need to be calm, you need to be clean, you need to be relaxed, you need to be yourself. If not, how are you going to come to the exams? You must be your true self, you must be relaxed, you must eat right, you must sleep right, or else you won't make it. And also those things that you're doing are part of your machine to be, mission to become a doctor. Even if you feel that this is not part of what that is so critical now and important, but it is. It is part of what you need to do. So also in the month of Elul, great! It is what you should do, but not only to wake up in before of dawn and to pray in the Netzachama and to put filin Rashi and then Rabbeinu Tam and to learn and to do tshuva and to confess and to read all of the viduim and all of the Likutet Filot and to finish all of the Likutet Moran before Rosh Hashanah and to make it this and this and that and to go and to do Tikunim and to do this and... Uh, yeah, it's, it's great, I don't know. I never tried that. So, like, I tried a few of those things, but it didn't work for me. It, it never brought me closer to Hashem. I always felt, maybe I'm sensitive to feel, but I always felt like those things are just terrifying me and confusing me and, and, and rejecting me from, from the purpose of loving Hashem and want to serve Hashem and to commit myself to Hashem. Because when I'm afraid, when I'm scared, I'm, I'm barely able to function. I cannot. I'm just sitting and I'm worried and I cannot focus. And that's actually why that friend called me to ask me that question. Because he realized that that fear is killing him instead of giving him life. But in Rosh Hashanah, we want to be written and to be signed Lechaim for life, not for death. So why are you killing yourself before Rosh Hashanah? You need to give yourself life. You need to breathe. Elul, Ani Dodi Vedodili. The first letter, the letters that built the word Elul, the month of Tshuva, are building the verse Ani Dodi Vedodili. I'm coming to get married with my husband. That's the meaning of the verse. I'm going to be married with my husband. My husband going to marry with me. That's the verse. So we're talking about a wedding in Rosh Hashanah. So it's a wedding. It's a celebration. So before of your wedding, you're going to kill yourself and slaughter yourself and cut your fingers and then break your back and destroy your mind and twist your heart. And what's that? No, never. That's not how you prepare yourself for the wedding. For the wedding, you go to a hotel, you go to the spa, you fix your fingernails, you comb your hair, you buy a nice dress, you're making everything great, you buy food, you invite the many guests, all your family, you're getting married. That's the wedding. 
the connection with the Creator must be based on love or else you don't understand what you're doing. What are you doing? <laughs> don't do it. Quit. I'm asking you. If you're not willing to connect yourself to Hashem in a relationship that's based on love, so do yourselves a favor and live for your, for your own sake. Like, what are you doing? Go snowboard, go surfing, go do something that will make you happy. Go eat in restaurants all day long. Like, take your life seriously and be happy. If a person doesn't want to connect himself to the Creator in a relationship that's based on love, so what's the connection? How can you connect yourself to someone if that connection is not based on love? How can you choose that connection? How to do it? 90% of people are doing it. But why to do it? That's what I don't understand. A person is calling you, hi, how are you? You want a date? If you don't love him, so you say no. If you don't like his company, so you say no. If you don't feel like meeting him tonight, you say no. What? No, um, look, or maybe I'll see. Why? Why are you lying to yourself? <laughs> Why? Why not to be a person of truth that is doing what that he feels like doing and being honest with yourself? Because that you're holding too many truths. And those truths are not the real truth. It's true that you're alone. So what? I'm going to stay alone. So maybe I'll go with him even if I don't want to go with him. Oh, because I'm depressed. So and they are all seems to be happy when they're clubbing, when they're dating, when they're going to the pubs, when they're hanging out in, in the streets. I don't know what. So maybe I'll go with them and then I'll be happy. But it never made you happy. You never came back happy after doing all of those nonsense. So why to lie to yourself? Why to keep on dragging and dragging and cheating yourself and blaming yourself and making another mistake that you're going to hate yourself for and going to regret on doing it and another time and another time and another night and another week and another month and another year and all started because that you were not honest, just simply honest enough to say, I don't like drinking, I don't like clubbing, I don't like this hard music, I don't like to come back home with smell of smoke and cigarettes all over my jacket. I hate it when, when, my, when my hair is full of smell of smoke. I don't like it. I don't want that. You're too afraid, too scared to be who that you are. And that's why you suffer. You don't suffer because life is hard. You make your life hard. You can be very easily happy with small things in life. You know which cookies you like, so why do you need to keep on looking for other kinds? You know which cookies are nice for you. You know what you like to eat. You know exactly what good for you to drink. Why are you choosing drinks with your eyes? Choosing, maybe I'll try this color. And are you tasting the colors of the drinks? Can you taste colors? You cannot. It can look blue and it's salty. You don't know if it's sweet, if it's salty. You don't know. It's blue. Oh, I'll take the blue. Why? It's blue. What does it mean? That it's good for your systems, for your body, for your, for your health? For, for... It's the same sugar, it's the same poison in all the drinks. It's a little bit different. Okay, so you found something that is good for you. Drink it. Be happy. Why well, I need to change. No, I need to do this. I need to do that. You're just twisting. You're just not being honest. Life can be very simple. What? You don't know which music you like, you don't know what you like to do with your life, you don't know which kind of work is good and calm and quiet for you. Everyone knows something about himself. I'm not saying the whole picture, but to know the whole picture, it will start with few steps. So something you know, you know it's good for you to wake up in the morning around 9. So wake up at 9, don't push yourself, that's good for you. Really, for your health, look for a job that starts at 10. That's Put yourself in that position. Set that rule for you. If you, for you, to wake up at 7, 7.30 is death, means all day long you'll be dizzy and confused and gonna hate your life, don't do it. But I'm broke. Okay, keep on looking. Don't worry, you're gonna find. If you will be loyal to yourself, if you will count on Hashem, you will find a better job. But as long as you're choosing to go like the snake and to move from one side to the other, no, I'm broke, I must do this, I must do that, and no, I, all of those thoughts based on the fact that you don't believe that Hashem will help you. 
So you're just going in circles, in circles. Reshaim, Saviv Italachun, evil people are walking also in circles and just being lo lost and confused. And you're always not happy, and you're working in a place that you hate, and your company, you not feel comfortable with them, and they wait for your job, you hate that road, and, and, and it's all true. You don't have sparks in that place, you're just losing your life and your happiness in that job. People are laughing at you, and all of those are hints for you to understand that you're going in the wrong direction. So don't do it. No, but I must do it. Okay, so do it. I'm available, you can call me until the middle of the night, no problem, I'm barely asleep, it's no problem. Call me, I'll answer you. The truth is that you're just far from your own truth. So how you want to connect yourself to the divine truth? If to your own truth, to be truthful, to be yourself, you, you, you're not keeping that yet. That's wrong, that's a mistake. You want to connect yourself to Hashem? You must understand that Hashem, He loves you. He loves you. He doesn't have no problems with you. He understands that you are in the exile, that you are in the darkness, that you're suffering. He knows, He sees. God, He knows. He understands. He sees what, you, what you're going through. He sees your nights, He sees your dreams, He sees your mornings, He sees your noon, your afternoon, your evenings. He sees, he sees it all. It's obvious that he understands you. If he doesn't understand you, so what are you doing with him? But you are keep on following on other people assumptions, on other people opinions that are telling you that you must fix yourself, that Hashem is angry at you, that Hashem will judge you, that you don't know what's going to happen to you, that Hashem hates those kind of things that people are doing, and all of those things, right, they are written but you need to know how to use them. How do you say, okay, pharmacist, pharmacist, a pharmacist, when he makes medicines, so he knows exactly how, which amount to take from every materia to make the right drug that will be useful for a person with a certain sickness. And if he will be wrong, if he will change the, the, the measurements, the scales, <laughs> he can kill the person. So also, yes, it's written that Hashem is upset. But also the Gemara is writing to us exactly how much time Hashem is upset in a day. How much time? Kerega. That's what it's written. Kerega. A moment. So the Gemara is asking how much time is a moment? And the Gemara is answering the same time that it takes for a person to say moment. That's it. So Hashem was angry, yes. How long? A moment. That's it. Now he's calm, he's relaxed, he's happy, he's with you. Yes, he was so angry, now he's happy, everything is great, he's hugging you again, he loves... It's finished. He was angry. You can never put your finger on that moment that he's angry. That was exactly how they explained the greatness, the wisdom of, of, of Bilam. That he was able to shoot and to, and to score that moment that Hashem is angry. And he knew how to aim to that second now. But it's, it's over. No one else can do it. Only he, because he was so angry, he was so vicious, he was so cruel, he was so mean, so bad, that that was his essence, that he could feel it. He felt the anger of Hashem. It was his pleasure. It was his satisfaction. He felt when judgments were coming. He loved it. That was him. It's a, it's a devil. He was a devil. So he could find the moment, that window, that crack that Hashem is opening it day for, in a day for, for darkness to penetrate to the world. But it's only a moment. And when that moment finished, that's it. The gate is closed. Now you are keep on going with those thoughts because someone told you, Oh, Hashem is angry, Hashem is upset, and you go, and everything that happens, oh, now Hashem punished me, and if something is not going right, oh, for sure, I did something wrong, and Hashem is punishing me, and now everything is closed, and all of the blessings that I received until now, nothing going to work, and all of the promises that I received until now, nothing going to happen, and I'm not worthy, and I don't have a share in the Geula, I don't have a part in the redemption of Am Yisrael, I'm not this, I'm not that. What are you talking about? 
משה רבנו was fighting with השם, משה רבנו was fighting with עם ישראל to redeem the, 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 the nations that were also working in slavery in Egypt. People that were disconnected completely from Judaism, of other people, from other nations, that they were 100% separated from Am Israel, and they were, were working in, in different places, in different camps, and they were in, in, in different groups, different people. And Moshe Rabbeinu said to Hashem Barach, I am not going out from Egypt unless you give me the permission to take everyone with me. Even the Goim, even the non-Jews, even the nations. That was Moshe. So if you have righteous men like that that is fighting for you, and he couldn't care less on how many pages of Gemara you learned, and if you davened in the right way, because he loves you in unconditional love. And that wisdom that Moshe had was not because that Moshe was genius, it was only because that Moshe got the thing, they got the, the will of Hashem. He realized what Hashem wants. He, he, he understood Hashem. Because that's Hashem. Hashem is Barach, He loves everyone. Rachamav al kol ma'asav. He loves all of His creations. He loves all people. With all opinions, with all colors, with all accents, with all backgrounds, with, from all nations. He loves the Creator. He created them. Every one of them, He delivered Him to life. He gave Him life. Every one of them. He's walking with him, and he's supporting him, and he's watching over him. And even when he must rebuke him, so he's rebuking him in the minimum, minimum way that he can. And he's also hinting him and showing to him exactly what he needs to fix. A person today asked me about the situation that he's going through in life, some challenges that he's going through in health issues. So I told him, listen, describe to yourself your physical problem now you have a headache. Okay, great. Now, try to understand what physically is happening to you when you have a headache. And explain to yourself, okay, the head is an organ that with that organ I'm, I'm running my life, I'm thinking about certain things, with my eyes I see, with my ears I hear. My head, when it hurts, it hurts me here, and then I cannot think right. Great, wonderful. Whatever explanation you have. Your arms, you have pain in your arms. Okay, your hands. What, 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 what does it mean, the hands? Okay, with my hands, I'm carrying things, I'm lifting things, I'm taking things, I'm doing things, I'm touching things. Okay, great. After that, you explain to yourself physically what is the pain that you have, and now I'm not able to touch, and now I'm not able to lift, and now it feels hard for me when I'm moving my arm to, from, to the right side, from the left side, or whatever. After you explain to yourself the physical sorrow that you have, now copy, paste to spiritual aspect. And that's the meaning of what that is happening to you spiritually, emotionally. Emotionally, you cannot move. Emotionally, you cannot touch. You cannot feel. You are going through a certain experience now that you cannot think about it, that you cannot look at it anymore, that you're not able to feel, that you feel that you are about to collapse. Emotionally, that's the real interpretation. And it's crazy. Why? Because it's so simple. And it's right under your nose. The real answer to all of your life questions, to all of the mystery of this world, is right under your nose. And also the redemption. And also the salvation. Also the way out. Because in the moment that you realize that those hints are hints from Hashem, that's it. You know what to do. You know what to fix. You know that you don't want to look to that direction because it's too hard for you. Don't look. <laughs> move away okay you can't touch it okay you can't touch it don't touch it that's it listen to your inner voice it's so simple it's so simple that it's crazy it's ridiculous it's so crazy it's so easy it's here it's now it's Hashem it's redemption it's not across the sea it's not behind the, the, the mountains of darkness it's here in your mouth and in your heart, you can feel it. 
What is making you happy? Pasta, you like to eat? Eat pasta! Rice, you don't like? You don't feel good after you eat rice? Don't eat rice! No, I like rice. Great, eat rice! No, but I don't like rice. Don't eat rice! You like raw vegetables? Great! Raw vegetables doesn't do good for your stomach? Don't touch it! It's okay! You don't need to eat raw vegetables because I'm eating it. You don't need to eat meat because I'm eating. And you don't need to be vegetarian because I am. You don't need. You just need to listen to your inner voice. There are periods of time in life that you must eat meat. There are periods of time in life that you must eat fish. There are periods of time in life that you must eat chocolate and you don't know what that chocolate is doing in your organs, in your, in your body, in the cells. Which cells it's building and which other chemicals it's increasing and bringing and which vitamins cacao contains. You don't know those things. You don't know what the sugar rush that you eat that chocolate bar is doing in your system. Oh, but I heard a, a read a horrible article about it. Yes! So that article is an article of truth and it fits for a certain person in a certain situation and you're not in that situation right now. Even that it can fit to you as well. But it doesn't mean that it is. You need to listen. You need to listen to your inner voice. And if now you feel that you need to eat that chocolate, eat that chocolate and relax. And understand that you are much, much more sophisticated then you can understand that you are. Because the one that is making you work and move and waking up the desires inside of you, it's him. It's the creator. And you just can't see it. Why? Because you're not counting on him. But count on him. And he will straight up your path. He will lead you to the right way. What? By eating lettuce every day? Yes! Because you don't know the sparks that Hashem is putting in lettuce that are especially great for you. For me, yes. Because Hashem, He knows. He knows who are you, who you are, how you built, how, what you went through, what you lack of. And He put the sparks in certain things and He's offering them to you in a way that will shine, that will spark that will glow, glow, and you look at a certain fruit, a certain vegetable, a certain bag of some kind of product, and you say, hey, I need that brand. I want to buy from that kind, in that size. And you don't know that there are such deeper meanings to, to, the, to the bounty package that you bought in the, in the supermarket. And you can never understand how deep and how far things are going. Because Hashem made it all. And nothing is simple, nothing is flat, nothing is empty. Everything is full with godliness, with real spirituality. Oh, today you want to wear that brown jacket. You don't want anything, you don't understand that Hashem wants you to wear that jacket. And if you lost that jacket, Hashem knew exactly when to take it from you in the most precise second of your life. No, but I wanted to wear that jacket today, tonight, I want... You don't need it. Hashem knows exactly, but I want it. Okay, but Hashem he knows better than you for you, not for Him. Hashem doesn't care which colors you wear. Hashem he loves you because of your soul. Hashem he just loves you as you are. And you also need to start love you yourself because of who that you are and not because of the color of your jacket. And not because of your color of your skin and not because of the color of your eyes. Because it's not important. Because Hashem He knew much much better than you how to illustrate you, how to design you in a perfect way that fits for your completion to bring you to the purpose of your life. That you're gonna deal with certain embarrassments and certain situations, that you're gonna to have to confront certain people, that you're gonna to have to face certain things in life, and that you're gonna struggle, and that you're gonna choose right to be your true self, and not to be shy, and not to be embarrassed, and to allow yourself to laugh, and to allow yourself to yawn, and to allow yourself to sneeze, and to allow yourself to blow your nose in public, because you need to blow your nose. So it's okay that you're going to blow your nose. nose. People are not eating. They're afraid what they're going to have in their teeth. Okay, so buy a small mirror and check your teeth after five minutes. After every five minutes, 
It's also allowed. If you're so afraid, if you're so terrified, do it. People are against plastic surgeries. I met people in my life that if they wouldn't do those plastic surgeries that they did, they would kill themselves. They wouldn't have the ability to survive to cross life. They hated the way that they looked and they couldn't fix it. It was too much for them. And they made that small surgery and it fixed everything for them. And now they're calm. Now they're happy. Now you're going to come and you're going to tell them that they were wrong. Who are you? Hashem made those doctors to be so wise and with so much experience and to develop so many new things with technology today that they can help you and they can fix things for you and they can heal you and they can redesign it. Who are you to say your opinion? You know about yourself that you have the power to deal with your look, so don't change it. But can you say that he should also work on himself and he should be strong? Who are you? Do you know which humiliations he went through in life? Do you know how he'd been destroyed from age of five or three or one? A person once told me that the first thing that his mother said after he came out to the world is, I don't want him, take him back, take him away, I don't want him. A person can come to the world with that a huge hug, with that blessing, I don't want him, take him away. Now, what do you think will happen with this kid? What? A woman told me once, her, her, her mother all of her life was telling her, you destroyed my, 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 our, my, your parents' relationship because you came too fast. Okay. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here right now. I don't feel like just going the hell away from here. So, you now can blame this kid, that daughter, that girl, that poor woman, that she hates the fact that she's alive because all of her life she heard and she realized that she'd been convinced and forced to understand that she destroyed the love between her parents. And they were fighting all of the years and they were cursing each other all of the years. And she was the one to be blamed on that. And now you're going to tell her not to fix her nose? Are you crazy? Why? She got a big nose and she cannot deal with it and she wants to fix it. Let her live her life. Let her do what she wants. No, you know better. Who are you, the creator? The Creator, He created her in a way, and He also created for her a way to change herself, to work on herself, to fix something. We're saying that it is also an option. It doesn't mean that that's the right way to make plastic surgeries, but you cannot argue, and you cannot think that you're wiser than people that are choosing a certain path in life. Stop acting ridiculous and, and judging and criticizing everyone. Because the main one that you hate and criticize 24-7 is yourself. You hate everyone because you hate yourself. You cannot stand other people because you cannot stand yourself. When you're going to fix your eyes, you're going to judge everyone favorably. When you're going to judge yourself favorably. When you're going to accept yourself. When you're going to understand that you're a creation of Hashem, you're going to understand that He's also a creation of Hashem. And then you'll have only compassion. And then Hashem will show only compassion on you. Because Hashem, He needs us also. Like we said before, how can it be? Hashem, He wants us all to be happy. Hashem, He wants us all to be wise. Hashem, He wants us all to succeed. Hashem wants us all to grow. And so why is not helping us? Why doesn't bring me the money? Why doesn't buy me that house? Why doesn't help me with that car? Why doesn't help me with my shalom? Buy it. Why? Why? If He wants so much to help, so where is that help? The only way that you will be satisfied from receiving help, and that's the truth, is if you're going to succeed in life, and if you're going to achieve by yourself what did you dream of. Because if you're going to receive free gifts from people, you will never going to be satisfied. You will never going to be proud of yourself. And Hashem is helping you to achieve the highest level of them all, to understand that He's with you. To give you faith. And when you'll have that faith, you'll have confidence. And when you'll have confidence, when you will pray, your prayers will be answered. And then you will realize that everything that you do is building you. 
and that everything that you went through in life just built for you the vessels to be redeemed and to be answered and to receive amazing miracles into your life and wonders will happen to you and I'm telling you that the redemption is closer than ever I can smell it, I'm feeling it, I'm, 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 it's, it's, it's here, it's here, it's happening right now. Things soon will change and we will go above nature. You will need to go home, you're just going to fly back home. You're going to have to have some things from the grocery store, it's just going to come to your house. When you look at an animal, you look at the deer, you look at the dog, you look at uh, 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 cute animals. Don't you see in their eyes that they're willing to communicate with you? That they're looking for your touch, for your hug, for your compassion, for your love? You can't see it on animals? That they're yearning for your, your compassion? How can it be? Because they also have that ancient memory from heaven, from the earliest days, from the ancient days of heaven, that they were walking with us in heaven, in the garden, and everything was safe, and everything was great, and they could walk by our side, and we wouldn't hunt them, and they wouldn't pray to us, wouldn't hunt us, wouldn't kill us, and we were all family, we were all friends. They would bring us fruits from the forest, and we would take out thorns from their hands, from their uh, arms, paws, and, and we would do things for them, and they would do things for us. We would fix nature for them and helping them with things that they needed. And they would bring things to us and help us for, with the certain things and protecting us if we would need. Everything was calm. And that's the prophecy of the future to come. That is exactly what that happens. And it's in our hands. We just need to see it. When you see an animal, no, I'm allergic to cats. No, don't be allergic. Green. If now you are allergic, okay, so take one step back, but don't hate cats because of that. Understand that you have an issue with cats, with what the cats are, are all about, with the essence of cats. You have a problem. That's why you're aller allergic. You're allergic to, to, to the trees, to blooming, to, 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 to whatever, the, the, when trees are blooming, all of the, 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 the dust that they're creating, all of the, the, the seeds, you're allergic to that. Great! Try to understand to what you're really allergic. And, you, and then when you're going to understand it, that you have a problem with things that are blooming, with things that are getting nicer and nicer, you're afraid of it. You're allergic to it emotionally. You're allergic to it spiritually. You have a problem with it. When you're going to find the real answer, you won't be physically allergic anymore. You will be healed. That's your complete health. When you will understand why you have problems in your relationship with a person, and you're going to make an investigation, you're going to think, you're going to try to remember, and you're going to find the right answer, you solved your problem. It went already. You won't ever have problems with him in Shlombayit. I know it from my life experience. Things that were bothering me in my relationship with my wife, today they're not bothering me. We learned how to know each other and how to understand each other. The, the communication and the conversation between us is, is flowing like the Niagara Falls one to each other. We're talking and talking and sharing and explaining and understanding and thinking and caring and loving and supporting and, and refixing and rebuking and talking and everything that you can imagine that you can do verbally with words, we're doing. Everything. Not only the good stuff, everything we do. But through that, you understand that you, you have a person and you learn how to know him. You cannot know a person until he opened his heart and shared with you who that he is. Right? If he will hide his real thoughts, his real emotions, his real feelings, you will never going to know him because he's hiding. How he will open up to you and going to start sharing if he will see that when he's sharing, you're there, you're caring, you're thinking, you appreciate it, you listen all the way, you don't interrupt, you don't judge, and that you also find him a worthy, good friend to share with, and you're also telling him, 
and you're also revealing yourself to him and you're opening yourself to him so then he's looking at you and he sees an opportunity to express his true self and then he feels like he can be himself with you and then you have Shalom Bait and then you can fix your relationship with your parents, with your siblings, with your friends, with your community, with whoever only by fixing yourself, being more open, being more yourself even if you are different, so what? So you're bringing another table, another color to the table, another flavor to the table. You're bringing another thing that no one else can bring, yourself. And that's our mission. You cannot bring me. I'm, I'm going to bring me. You're going to bring you. You can bring yourself to the world. That's what Hashem did when He brought you to the world. He brought you to the world. That's it. That's what you wanted. Now you need to express God's creation. Who that you really are. Who that I really am. I just need to allow myself to share with my thoughts and to tell what that I feel and to express if it's my sorrow and if it's my happiness and to be honest and also to be caring, to love, to appreciate, to think to express my real emotions. And if I'm fragile, and if I'm sad, I'm going to try to talk about it. I'm going to try to say, I feel sad. I, 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 I feel confused. I want to say something, but I don't know exactly how to express myself. That's a very good way to express yourself, to say, I can't find the right words to express myself. That's an amazing way to express yourself. You just did. You just said your real thoughts that you can't find the right words, how to describe Here, I have an English teacher with me in the class. She's walking to all of my lectures to, to, to help me to, to speak. That's what we need. We need to be ourselves. We need to be friends. We need to help to each other. Everyone to say to his friend, don't worry, I'm with you, and strengthen each other, and support each other. You don't. He wants to open a business. Great, go for it, succeed. He wants to do something else. Yeah, great, amazing, I'm with you, I'm praying for you. I love you, I want to see you happy, I want to see you succeed. Do you think that you, you're going to take my money if you're going to succeed? He will, he will take over the market, I'll, I'll be broke. Well, Hashem, he doesn't have a way to, to support me. That's it. The finish, the money in the world, that's it. If he will succeed in his store, that's it, now I'm done. No, what's the connection? If it's a good store, I'll come and buy as well. I want to have good stores around my area. It's great. It's amazing. Go succeed. Be happy. And if you will support him, and you're going to love him, and you're going to tell him a good word, and you're going to pray for him, so the blessing that he will enjoy from will go and flow to your house as well. Every person that prays for his friend, and he needs the same salvation, he will be answered first. How will you know that you that you really prayed from the heart if you've been answered. If your prayers haven't been answered yet, it means that you never, you never really pray like you, you should have. You haven't found the, the truth that you were supposed to pray for. Now, a person, is, he saw a beautiful woman walking in the street, and that's it. He feels that's it. He loves her. It's not the truth. It is, might be his fears of, of being alone or not finding someone that other people will like. So he's looking for someone beautiful. He doesn't really like her. He just, she answers to his fears. So he thinks that he needs to have her. So now he thinks, okay, I, I love her. You don't love her. You love the idea to have her by your side. You don't love her. She's not part of your life. And you're going to see that in the future she's going to marry someone else and not you, if she's not already married to someone else and not to you. But bottom line, a person can think, oh, wow, look, woman, whatever. And he's going to think to himself, I love her. And he now going to go and do six hours in Bodhidwiyot on that. Hashem, I want to marry her. I want to marry her. She's not his wife. Why that Hashem going to answer that crazy prayer? Now he's screaming, Hashem, I want to be rich. I promise. 
I'm going to give half of my $700 billion for charity. Great, whatever. But the other half will destroy you because you really don't have the vessels to contain that huge amount of, of money. You don't know how to handle money. You're going to destroy the world. If Hashem will move this huge amount of money from another place to your hands, you're going to destroy the flow of the world. Things that need to be done, you're not going to have the wisdom to do them. You won't calculate your moves right with that money. And by the way, there are other things that you need to go through that if you will have money, you won't go through those things. Certain difficulties, challenges, things that you need to face with, that if you will face those things, you will achieve things that are much higher and greater and more important than having money. Because the real reason why you want to have money is not because that you need money, just because that you're terrified from not having money. You're afraid to deal with your fears of being stuck with no money and not knowing how to pay your deal bills and how to answer your landlord and how to apologize to your wife and how whatever. And because of that fear, now you're praying to have money and you're already convinced yourself that it's a good enough cause for Hashem to answer your prayers and you're, you're very generous, you're ready to share 700 billion dollars with Hashem 50-50, no problem Hashem, I'm with you on that and you're just you're just creating illusions to yourself Hashem won't answer that prayer because you're not praying, just screaming and barking and, 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 and talking ludicrous nonsense with no with no re, with no taste with no with no essence with no purpose that's not what Hashem wants for you Hashem for you he wants something that will fit really to your soul that when you will wake up in the morning you will be happy you will feel complete you will be calm you will be yourself I have a student a woman that her husband he was abusing her, abusing her, physically, emotionally, spiritually, destroying her. And she knows it, <laughs> no doubt. And she decided to divorce him. And she decided to divorce him years ago. And she, I don't want to describe the humiliations and the sorrow that she went through with that man. Things that are horrible abusing, torturing that woman, doing things that are 100% not pro appropriate, not right, hurt her in horrible ways that are not allowed to be done. And after a while, he decided to apologize after she said she wants to divorce. And he decided to apologize, and he decided to bring some friends to talk to her, and he is trying to make his way back home. And she starts feeling bad with herself. And me, I don't have no opinion. I'm just asking her. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> what are you doing to yourself? Why are you being attempted by those voices of someone that destroyed your life? And if you find that it's coming from an honest place, so great. If you will tell me, yes, he's doing tshuva, he's waking up, okay, I hear you. If you will tell me, look, the children, they, 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 they lack that father. And everything is going better and better one day from the, better than the other. And so why, why? And I gave that woman an example. If now someone will tell you, listen, you owe me a million dollars. You're going to start looking for ways to pay him? No. You're going to tell him, are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? I never did no business with you. If you didn't make no business with him, so you're not going to owe him that money and you're not going to pay that money even if he will claim it, even if he will demand it, even he will, if he will scream it. I don't owe you that money. I'm sorry. I'm not paying what that I don't owe. So if you know that that person is not your husband, that that person tortured you, that that husband raped you and destroyed you. So, what are we talking about? It's not the one that you want to live with. So why even to start listening to his arguments? 
to his way of, of, of trying to take possess, possession. possession on you again. Why? Don't give him that. Because it, you give yourself over to someone that you don't want to. That is the result of a person that doesn't listen to his inner voice. He doesn't feel like part of a certain system, so you not belong to that system. Person lives in a certain community and he feels disconnected, and yes, 10 years he lives in this place. So what? You know how huge this world is? You know how many other options you have in this world? How many other opportunities can be open for you? No, but I don't know, but I don't familiar with, but I don't have connections. You don't need, if Hashem is with you, the first door that you're going to knock can open. But you need to count on Hashem. A student of mine wanted to go to Israel. She said, but I'm terrified. I'm afraid. I don't know what's going to happen. I told her, everything will be perfect. Don't worry. Everything was perfect. She saw miracles with her eyes. She needed a place for Shabbat. Someone called her. She found something. She went. Who were those people that were hosting her? Students of mine. She didn't know. She didn't know. And I told her, if you're going to call the certain people, they're students of mine, they're going to help you. She decided not to do that. She went to Shabbat over there. She met them. What? Hashem is doing it. Listen. She chose to be worried. And she chose to be terrified. And she chose not to listen to the voice that anyway gave her siyata dishmaya and help for heaven. She ignored that voice. That's why she suffered. But after that, Hashem revealed His kindness, so she realized, okay, I was wrong, Hashem was with me. And that's exactly what that goes on with us, all of the time. In the end, you realize, it was all for the good. It was all the best. Hashem, He knew exactly what He was doing. If we're lucky, we're understanding these wisdoms, or those conclusions, we're coming to them in early stages. Or at least, as long as we're here in, in this body. And if not, you're going to see that truth in the world of truth. You're just going to see that it was all perfect. Perfect. Not 99.9. 100% .9. round, complete, perfect. All Hashem. Now, you have problems with Hashem. You don't feel that it's perfect. Adraba, even worse, you feel that it's horrible. You have complaints. Great. Who planted those complaints in your heart? Who planned that sorrow and, and that pain in your heart, if not him? Okay, so he did it to me. Yes, not to fight with him. To call him and to ask him to help you. To open a relationship and a connection that based on love. And then your prayers will be answered. And then you will see the wonders and the miracles that you were hoping for. And then, while seeing that your prayer has been answered, all of your faith will be complete. And you will see with your eyes that Hashem is here. And you won't have no more doubts. And no more questions anymore. You will be about Shiva. You will go with your answer. And you will know the truth. And like we said, it's all right under your nose. It's here. It's now. There's nowhere to go. You just need to breathe. Now you want to be close to Hashem? Okay, I want to be close to Hashem. So what should I do? Maybe I will learn Gemara for that. Maybe I will learn Chumash for that. Maybe I'll put Tfilin if I want to be close to Hashem. You want to be close to Hashem? Where is Hashem? Here, right? Kvodom Aleolam. He's everywhere, right? He's inside of me also, right? So why do I need to be close to myself? He's me, right? He's outside of me. He's inside of me. He's my soul. He created my body. Where he brought that breath, that air that he created the world with from his inside, from himself, Everything here is only Him. Enad Milvado, there is nothing except of Him. So why I feel separated? Because I'm not thinking right. That's it. <laughs> Reset.
and that's it. And start again. Yeah. Thinking ne in a negative way. You don't need to do anything. You just need to breathe. To breathe. To relax. Just to reconnect yourself to your true being. To meditate. To breathe. You feel like keeping to all mitzvot. You feel that that's the right direction for you. You feel inspired by keeping Shabbat. By it. Do it. The Zohar Kadosh is calling the mitzvot, the obligations, itin tavin, good advice. They are good advice. It is good. For a man to put filin, it's a good advice. To keep Shabbat for every person, it's a good advice. To eat kosher food, it's a great, amazing, good advice. It's good advice for you. It's a very good advice. To be nice to people, it's a good advice. To be kind, to be generous, to smile to people, to say Shalom Aleichem, oh, welcome, hi, I'm so happy to see you. It's a good advice. To eat healthy, it's a good advice. To wash yourself every day, to cut your fingernails, to straight yourself, to be a normal, decent, honorable person that respects others. Those are great advice, right? Yes, that's it. That's the whole story. Hashem gives you the right advice. He guides you to walk in the right path. So do it. And if something is too hard for you, so relax. It's all good. Go eat something. Think about it. Try to understand why it's so hard for you. Relationships, waking up in the mornings, eating kosher, standing behind the mechitza in shul, whatever you go through in life. Deal with it. That's a challenge. Great. That's the path you need to go through that challenge. You need to remove that obstacle away from your path. How are you going to do it? If you're strong, lift it and put it aside in the place that it won't damage no one else. If you're too, too weak, so take a few steps to the left or to the right and make a, 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 and surround it and continue. And if you can warn other people from that mm, danger, okay, so do that. Be a friend, be a man, be a friend, be a, be a, be a, be a friend, be loyal. Be a, be, a, be a man, be a person. Be who that you are. You feel like warning everyone. Warn everyone. You feel like helping everyone. Help everyone. You feel like helping animals. Great, help animals. There's nothing wrong with being a, a vet or just helping animals. Putting water for cats, mm, protecting certain animals, building a fence, doing whatever taking that small bird to your house and feeding it. Do it! If that's you, if that's your life, if that's the supervision on you, do it! You cannot argue with Hashem. Hashem will keep on bringing those wounded animals to your doorstep and nothing going to stop it in the world. There is no one that can stop those animals from coming to your doorstep. You know why? Because you're the one that can help them. And Hashem chose you for that mission, and that's your mission. So do it. So why to hate yourself? Oh, why it's always happening to me, all of the wounded animals, why I need to see that sorrow, why I need to experience that thing. Why are you asking too many questions? <laughs> why can't you just understand that that's who that you meant to be? You meant to be the man, the woman that will hug that poor dove before it's going to cross to the world to come. Why can't you be happy that you were able to show some love on a poor dove, to hug it, to pet her head? She died. She would die with you or without you. It wasn't your fault that that car hit that dove. You had nothing to do with it. Just Hashem put you in that right place, in that right place, moment that you will show some compassion on that poor animal, poor bird, for one second before it's going to fly away to the endless pleasure of it in the world to come. So just understand that you're in a mission and don't forget that you're in a mission. And part of your mission can be also to play basketball and also to learn Gemara and also to learn Chumash and also to swim and to dance and to sing and to eat sushi if that's what you want to do. If that's what you feel, when I made the tour to Canada, first time I've been to Canada, and then to New York, 
I don't know why, but all of that too, I was eating sushi. I don't know why. Hashem did it. This time, I ate sushi once and I didn't enjoy it so much. It was okay. It wasn't, but in that too, the first two, I don't know why, Hashem always put sushi in my plate. Can I tell you why? No, but I know that Hashem did it. We saw it with our eyes. Every place that I came, there was sushi over there. And it was delicious. It was amazing. I'm not a sushi fan. But Hashem wanted me to eat sushi in that tour. And that's what I was eating. And every people invited me to come for a restaurant, sushi. Another place, sushi. You come to that event, sushi. You got that place, sushi. What do you want, Hashem? Sushi? Sushi! Great! I'm with you, Hashem. Flowing. Whatever you want. So you can have one time that you'll eat sushi and one time you'll eat shawarma and it's all the same because Hashem is helping you to keep your body healthy and to watch over yourself and to heal yourself and you don't know why you need to eat this apple right now and why tomorrow you need to eat chicken and next day you'll eat sushi and you don't know what Hashem is doing with the vitamins and all the cells and all of the ingredients of all that kind of food that is so connected to your health level and, and, and it's balancing you and it's helping you and now you must drink orange juice. Yes, you must drink orange juice. Flow. Drink orange juice. It's okay to drink orange juice even if everyone else are just drinking cola or coffee or tea. If you need it and it's good for you, let it be, 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 okay? Thank you very much. <laughs> in this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.